if you shower or brush your teeth or try to make your hair look presentable, here's some good news. Dollar Shave Club has a lot of stuff to help you out. Dollar Shave Club delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, even a wipe that leaves your tush feeling tingly clean. All of Dollar Shave Club's products are made with top shelf ingredients that won't break your budget. You'll feel the difference. Plus, shipping is free with your membership. And here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products for just five bucks. You can get their daily essential starter set. It comes with body cleanser, one wipe Charlie's, their amazing butt wipes, and their world famous shave butter. And their best razor, the Six Blade Executive. Keep the blades coming for a few more bucks a month and add in a shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else you need. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Dems are very strong in the Justice Department. I put in an attorney general that never took control of the Justice Department, Jeff Sessions. Never took control of the Justice Department. And uh, it's a sort of an incredible thing. Isn't it weird that he's still there, right? Because... They, it's not like they've got along. You know, Sessions was out in front on the campaign. He was one of the first. He was one of the, the most vocal people. And then, that was when he was Senator Sessions, and then he became AG, and they started butting heads almost immediately the minute he decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to recuse myself from the situation. It's so weird, right? Like, because everybody else is gone. I was just talking to producer Phil. The day you're hired there, they should also give you your exit paperwork and say, look, here's the deal. Everybody's got a sell-by date here. It's quick, right? You're going to be renting for sure. In fact, if I were you, uh, pick one of the offices that we haven't filled yet. Just lay a cot out because you're not going to be here long enough to get your mail. But Sessions has been. And now, what do you do if you're Trump, right? Because he's still pissed at Sessions because as far as he's concerned, all of this could have been done. All of this could have been done and dusted, period. And he's blaming it on Jeff. And Jeff is firing back because I think Jeff knows, look, here's the deal. He's not going to fire me now. He fires me now and replaces him with some sort of lackey that's going to do whatever his bidding is. At that point in time, everybody's going to go, we're done. This is it. Something's wrong. This is ridiculous. So you know what? If I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out kicking and screaming. And I'm not going out now. Sessions typically ignores the president's attacks, but this time he's pushing back in a statement saying, I took control of the Department of Justice the day I was sworn in. While I am attorney general, the actions of the Department of Justice will not be improperly influenced by political considerations. End quote. Yeah. And I look, look, people say, and this is a perfect example of, you know, remember these are human beings, Department of Justice, the CIA, the FBI. These are all human beings. They all vote. Right? They're just like us. They do have biases on all kinds of things. Trump believes everybody in the Department of Justice is stacked full of Democrats who are out to get him. That's all they're doing. They're out to get him. That's it. We've seen it, right? You know, we see. And look, I'm not saying you can't weaponize stuff. Absolutely. You saw what happened with the IRS, right? You can weaponize. Presidents have done it before. Not saying that. But I just sit here and I think, stop picking fights. I know you don't want this to happen, this Mueller thing. It's going to happen. And blaming Jeff Sessions for it isn't going to move you forward in this. It's not. It's not working. It's not a good look. It isn't. But could you imagine today... If he fires Jeff Sessions and replaces him with somebody who steps in there and puts a halt to this, what that's going to look like? Because you know he's asked a bunch of people, can I do this? You can, and you're going to be done for. Even the people on the right may be screaming for some sort of look into it much deeper, maybe impeachment. What, what? You can, though. But this is just one of those relationships that needs to end. You don't have to be Dr. Phil to understand that the president and the attorney general do not have a good working relationship. 
Every president deserves an attorney general they have confidence in. As to Jeff Sessions, I've never met a finer man. He was a great senator. He's a great lawyer. I think he's been a good attorney general. But this is not working, so I hope the relationship gets better. If it doesn't, I would imagine the president is going to uh, look for a new attorney general because what's going on is unsustainable. I'm not blaming anybody. I love Jeff Sessions. But uh, from my point of view, the country is not being well served with as much friction. No, no, it's not. It's not. This this is the stuff that frustrates a lot of people out there. These kind of uh, of infighting stuff. And, and, and it's Trump. Trump fights with a lot of people. He does. I told, you know, the day he got elected, we talked about it. I say he thrives on chaos. He's one of those guys that's sitting around. If stuff's not happening, he doesn't like it. He likes the chaos. He likes it. But at the same time, this kind of chaos in a situation where you shouldn't have this kind of turnover in this kind of chaos. You should have turnover to a certain extent because the jobs around you and in themselves are tough, right? But I look at this and I think, you know, it's time to go. Somebody just texted in and said, look, you know, what do you think about Trey Gaddy? I said, yeah, that's, that's a huge possibility, right? That is. Hey, I'm not going to even rule out, let's say Ted Cruz loses. It's a possibility there. You don't know. But if you're whole, but the thing is, here's the thing. Trump would love a mulligan so he can bring somebody else in that would shut this thing down and he feels he can get on with his presidency. He would love it. And now he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. So he he's he's pissed at Mueller. He's pissed at Comey. He's pissed at Sessions. He's mad at everybody he can be mad at at this point in time. I'm not saying he doesn't have a right at times to be mad. I absolutely do. But this doesn't solve anything. This doesn't. And now you've gotten to the point where any kind of move, where you try to remove him or tell him he's fired and kick his ass to the curb, anything like that, A, he's going to turn on you, and B, you're going to have other Republicans. Because remember this about Jeff Sessions. He's a politician, right? That's what he was. He left his position to take this. He retired from his position to take this. And because of that, you have to sit back and say, oh, he may have some friends on that side of the aisle, the side that I'm on who may not be happy by this, so I have to step back and take political stock, it is is frustrating. It really, 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 really is. And it's interesting because he thinks, he believes, and this is something, Chuck Todd said something here that I, I, I agree with. He's pissed because he thinks everybody should be running cover for him. I get that. You put your people in place. Doesn't matter what you do. You 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 become a manager at a new place. What do you do? You want to bring in your own people. People you can trust. You don't know some of these other people, right? You want to bring people you trust. He's worried, hey, this is Obama's people. They don't like me. They don't like that Hillary won. They think I'm dirty. They think I'm bad. They think I'm a racist and I'm a homophobe and I'm a transphobe and I'm an Islamic phobe and I'm a xenophobe and I'm a phobic phobe and I'm an arachnophobia and all this stuff. They think all of these things. And it's still weaponized for Obama and the and, and the left. I want tr- Sessions to be my spear, my tip, to protect me. And that's the funny, ironic thing about this. Folks, the president's real problem with Jeff Sessions isn't about control at the Justice Department, and it isn't even really about his recusal. It's that Jeff Sessions won't weaponize the Justice Department in the president's favor. Plain and simple. Yeah. Look, and everybody wants that, right? You, you, Everybody wants that. You want it in your favor. You want to put people around you. But much like I've said all along, when you look at a lot of these things that have happened, right, whether it's the Amorosas or the Flynn's or the Mooch or the Spice or so many other people, you've put people in place. That's on you. That's on you. These are your hires. These are your hires. You want people to CYAU. I get it. No problem with that. Zero. 
But when you hire people and then they don't see why you want, then you go after them. Then they come after you. And then you've turned something. You've turned literally a, a molehill into a mountain. That's insane. At some point in time, you got to step back and say, this is going to play itself out. I've hired people that I thought were because it, it, to me, if you think he's incompetent, then why'd you hire him in the first place? Of course, every president, everybody wants people around them that are going to protect them. But at some point in time, you've got to let them do their job. He chose to step back. Right? He recused himself. Was it the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do? At this point in time, it doesn't matter. Because any other move from here on out that looks like you want to bring somebody in that's simply going to go in there and politically say, enough with this thing, this is a witch hunt, we're over, we're done. At that point in time, it's going to be political backlash that, that, that is going to cause you even more trouble. 323-538-2425. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. One of the other things we're following today is this. It was just over a year ago, July 19th of 2017, when John McCain revealed he was suffering from brain cancer. A few days earlier, he had undergone a procedure to remove a blood clot from above his left eye. It was then learned a primary brain tumor was connected to that blood clot. Now McCain's family saying he has decided to discontinue treatment that the progress of his brain cancer and the advance of age have rendered their verdicts. Yeah, it's sad. Uh, you know, John McCain is going to be remembered for a lot of things. And unfortunately, for the uh, f- in recent history, it's going to be the battles between Trump and him. Right? It's going to be the battles of Obamacare and him. But he did a lot in his life. He's 81 years old. Let's remember that. He's fought a good battle. Many people didn't think he would see last Christmas, let alone get to the point where he's almost to this Christmas. His body's been through hell and back, not just in the last few years, but in life. Hanoi Hilton, the things he's gone through. It is, it's is—it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. But it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a sad, sad situation for a guy who, you know, I, I travel between California and Arizona. And when I'm in Arizona, stations that I'm at there, uh, they have McCain, used to have McCain come in all the time. And it's interesting to watch them talk about McCain, where they said, you know, two, three, four years ago, you'd see this guy, not a big dude, but a big guy. I mean, he's stocky, he's built, he is just this you know, giant hand, just a, just a, and uh, so, even though he was small, he was somewhat imposing. And they said, you know, over the last couple of years, just watching me after he's getting sick and he's shrunk. And it's just it's sad to watch. And and you look at this and again, the eyes are going to be on the Twitter. What is Trump going to say? I like heroes that don't die. I mean, that's I'm waiting for that. It sounds horrible to say. And I know he's going to say something good. But at some point in time, when is it going to stop? And that's that, that's what I was talking to people today. They're like, I hope he doesn't do anything crazy. And I'm like, oh, he won't. He won't. He'll be he'll 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 be good. On this one, he'll be good. And and John McCain was a maverick in a lot of ways. He did his own thing and his run for president. Uh, I think it had a better shot if he wouldn't have picked somebody from Alaska. But who am I to say, right? 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. It is the Chad Benson Show. Feel free to punk this punk rocker any time of the day or night. Reach Chad on Twitter at Chad Benson Show and on Instagram at Chad Benson Show. And oh yeah, the Chad Benson Show on Facebook too. Punk that. Oh, what a day. Hope you're doing well. Just enjoyed it. Sad about McCain. It is, it is, you know, uh, it, when you sit back and you think about it, it, all of the things that that guy has went through. And what a life, right? You know, from from Vietnam and Hanoi Hilton to to the torture to having a successful life in politics to a run for president and raising a great family and all of that stuff. And he's 81. And, you know, I bet you if you'd asked him, you know, 50 years ago, when he's going through everything, the trials and tribulations and through Vietnam and everything, do you think you were going to make it and not only make it but have success? Hmm. Probably not, but what what a life indeed, and uh, still nothing from the White House, which is just, uh, just I don't know. 
three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. I love uh, hearing from you. Throughout the day, we're going to throw a few of these out. The New York Times has an editorial. <laughs> it's an opinion piece out, and it's who said it, Gotti or Trump? Gotti or Trump? Who said it? You see, he's one of. Excuse the expression, he's a friend of ours. Continental slime. That's what he is. Who said it? If you said John Gotti, you were correct. You are correct. And by the way, Rocket Man should have been handled a long time ago. Who said that? If you'd have said Trump, you'd be correct. But listen to this. Bust him up, put a rocket in his pocket. John Gotti. It is kind of funny, though, right? Straight talkers. That's what they are. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter each and every day at this time. We break it down for you. All styles. West Coast, East Coast, South, Northwest. You name it, we got it. Even in Maine, kids, we call this simply our urban word of the day. It's time for the Urban Word of the Day, fam. What? Right now? Time to get a little more hip on the streets. I can't understand a word you're saying. Urban Word of the Day. I heard some kids use this here because it got a bunch of new interns roaming around. And they were talking about stuff. And it was really interesting. They said no cap. And then they, afterwards, they were saying something. I said, well, what does that mean? Right? Like, now I feel really old. No cap usually means no lie. All right? So somebody would say, hey, how do I look? No cap. You look a mess. I don't know how they come up with this stuff, but the youth are using it, and they're using it in other ways that you just would. They make stuff up at times. But if you want to be hip, you got to learn the lingo, kids. You're only as old as you feel, and you might as well open the mind with your urban word of the day. Thank you for saying that and dated urban slang so that I'll understand you. That there was the urban word of the day. We damn stretched your cranium. I interview the president's former lawyer last night, Jay Goldberg, and he says, I don't see criminal conduct from the president uh, when it comes to collusion with Russia. I don't see criminal conduct from the president uh, when it comes to campaign violations. I say, but what about the lying? He says, oh, he is lying about what he did with the women and the public will have to account for that that they can't trust him to tell the truth but it's not a crime do you agree with that assessment I think that should... there's no criminal exposure perhaps in your opinion but that he lied about this yeah maybe he does lie i mean come on look trump politicians call it the flip-flop we would call it lying uh you know he says one thing and he says another thing and and, and i've always said in life right Actions are the things that speak the loudest. And it's interesting. Did he? And and he could have lied about a lot of stuff, but in the end, he could have done the stuff that was right. He could have lied about paying this and paying that and how it paid. And you find out, well, while he lied about it and didn't say stuff, eh, you know, everything was above board. It, it's just crazy. It's just, it, it is that we're in a situation where we're talking about this continuously. Paul Lamone, let's talk a little tech. He joins us straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Oh, what a day. Beautiful Friday. Normally you do this on Thursday, but he's joining us today out at a park. It's funny. Every time uh, producer Phil calls Paul Lamone, our tech guru, he goes, let's see where Paul's at today. Today he's out at a park shooting a commercial. That's the MO he's going with. Uh, it, it, let's talk a little tech, uh, Paul. And what? And you guys have a new product, and it's uh, you've got a kids line of stuff, and you've got all kinds of neat, and you've got augmented reality is what you guys do. Augmented reality, yep. And we're shooting a, a mini commercial for our our new product for kids, where their shirts come alive, and you can have a virtual augmented reality food fact. So we think kids will like it. 
Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Why not, right? Why, Why not? not? <laughs> Why not? All right, let, <laughs> let's talk about – this is interesting. So we were looking at some of the stuff. There's so much crazy stuff out there. and the, uh, Technology moves so fast nowadays, and, and where we're going and the, and the reach that we can go with in our technology to do things now that we never even just – even maybe fathom. How about cameras without lenses, huh? This is incredibly cool because the whole point of – the lens is to focus all the light that the sensors are collecting and turn it into the image. So it's an image like our, 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 the lens of our eye lets the light focus on our retinas. Well, our scientists have come up with a way to say, you don't need that lens anymore. I can take all this imagery that's coming from the light and on the backside reconstruct what that image should be on the computer. So I can turn almost any surface into a camera, which is just Amazing. So they're talking about applications could be the size of your car window could be dash cams. Um, the windows in your house, these are the first applications they want, would be security cams. Because I no longer need a lens, so I don't have to, I don't have to place it anywhere, so I can kind of hide things and cameras anywhere. So it's creepy on the other end when you think of that. That is absolutely insane. And you know what's insane about that is, the, A, the fact that we're, we're, we're talking about – I couldn't even imagine – like our car, that that's your dash cam, like you said, and and yeah, windows. Yeah. How huge and amazing would that be? Amazing. Think of it. You know, now everybody, a lot of people with newer cars, they have those backup cameras and those sensor cameras. Well, now your bumper is the camera, so you get a larger field of view. You can see more. It's and and it's just part of the bumper, so you don't need a special little camera that just gives you kind of a narrow view. You get almost these 360 views of your car because your bumpers are the are the actual cameras themselves. Which would be is awesome very when, cool step. When, when you think about it, as they move further and further on, you know, body cams for cops and all of these things, everything. This could be amazing and it also could be extremely intrusive. It could be extremely intrusive. But yeah, imagine if the cops, just their outfit, their bulletproof vest, the front of it and the back of it are cameras. So you're really collecting everything that's going on. Yeah, that's awesome. It is a great new step um, in, you know, surveillance. So the government and Apple computers and Google can know everything we're doing. Well, and, and the, the scary thing is we talked to Paul Lamont, our tech guy, is, is, is we sit here and we talk about and, and I, we can marvel at the ingenuity and the amazing things that happened from the time when we used to see those old black and white photos when nobody ever smiled and it's all tin type and it's all reversed and we, wow it's all amazing we, we marvel at those things to the point where now anything can be a camera if you will you don't need a lens and then the difference is is ah we think oh this will also be extremely intrusive so while it's very exciting intrusive it is as we talked to paul lamont our tech guy we move from there to some i i i've i've heard about for years that the way that they're going to start fighting cancer in many different ways is you're going to have little robots inside of you at some point in time i remember my doctor talked about this one day uh he said we'll have little robots in us sooner rather than later that will actually essentially float around inside of us and when it sees cancer uh, or or thinks there may be cancer it will go over and destroy that cell immediately and either stop the spread of cancer or never allow cancer to even begin well, well this is a great step those little robots they've been in tests and the problem was they were having a hard time figuring out what was good uh, cells and what was the cancer cells so it had a potential of harming good cells their new technique is a robot a nanobot that's the size of a hair that will go in it will find the blood vessel that's supplying the nutrients to the cancer tie off the blood vessel and starve the cancer to death that is a that's really amazing. cool unique way to to fight the cancer it's we are saying i'm taking away its food source so it's going to naturally die that is insane. So, that's insane. And it protects the, 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 the good uh, cells around it. So that makes it, you know, 10 times better than chemicals or even trying to destroy it directly. So when you look at something like this and and how would they would they inject this? How do they? The, is it one? Is it two? Is it five? Do they send hundreds of them there? Uh, you know, when I when I last talked to my doctor about this, some of the stuff that he had talked about and this was like several years ago. 
he said, look, you know, the things that they're looking at are so incredible when it comes to cancer that eventually your body will be not only already your body is the most amazing thing in the history of world, but it'll literally be able to we'll use technology to fight things that you'll never even know you were ever going to have. and It'll destroy it. But he talked about little nanobots then. But do you inject these things? Are they implanted in you? I think they're finding all kinds of ways to get them in. It'd be very easy. They're so small to inject them. Very easy to inject them. They might still have to have something a little more invasive depending on where the cancer is. But if we can control these things to the degree that they're saying they can, they could inject it into your bloodstream, find the cancer, and then tie off the the main, you know, veins that are ended up feeding that cancer and allowing it to, you know, feed off it and grow. So it will be a it would be like it wouldn't be chemotherapy, it'd be another way to treat cancer that would be almost probably painless in a, a lot of ways, which is amazing. Yeah, and, this, and again, and the side these effects. Are clinical trials, they're not sure exactly how it's going to pan out, but the clinical trials are incredibly promising, and they're saying that this could be a giant step forward in the treatment of cancer. Absolutely. Talking to Paul Lamona, our tech guy from Arvada Labs. And, uh, all right, Paul, so uh, this is, you know, I, I'm looking at all these games that are out there, and I want to talk to you about this. It's a Fortnite thing is just insane. My son Jack is now insane. super into Fortnite at eight years old. Uh, it is it is just, it's absolutely insane. And I read that it costs $20 million for them to produce Fortnite. Uh, when you produce a game like that, as you guys, uh, for those of you who don't know, Paul uh, is a tech guru that is uh, was one of the lead designers for World of Warcraft and Diablo and 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 one of the early employees at at Blizzard Entertainment. When you produce a game like this, you guys, there was there was a lot of you. The, you look at this and say, okay, this thing costs twenty million dollars. What is the upkeep of a game like that? How often are they? continually adding to us is it did they roll it out once in a great while or i mean how does that work there's a couple ways to view it now a lot of game companies are viewing games as a service so almost like you have your staff are constantly updating constantly fixing constantly optimizing the code making the game better balancing the game for the players and it never really stops fortnite spent 20 million but they're making on average about 200 250 million a month so they can afford to do all kinds of cool things to keep the, the game running well, to keep the players happy, bring on more territories, bring on more content. And it's really, you know, we were talking about internally. If you want to make money in the game industry, make a game that's free to play because Fortnite's free to play. They make 250 yeah. to 200 million dollars a month because they're not selling their game. If they sold their game, they wouldn't be making that much money. It's all micro micro uh, purchases, right? It's all micro purchases, micro transactions. People go, I really love playing this character. I want to have a, a, a skin that I that reflects my personality or something. You know, a costume for the character to wear, and they buy these and they buy them over and over. All kinds of things, new skins for guns, new skins for characters, uh, new looking characters, and it doesn't really affect the core gameplay. It just affects what it looks like and how other players that you're playing with see you. And that's been a cash cow. Yeah, that's that. That's an that's amazing. So when they're updating stuff like this, and you know now because you know uh, here in Arizona and across the country, uh, places you know high schools are now looking and saying, hey, you know what, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, high school sports is gonna now have esports, and they're they're picking their own. You know, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna do this discipline, if you will, or that. But I look at this and I think to myself. Because of, you know, they spend $20 million on this game to build. Uh, their upkeep, like I say, I don't even know what that costs monthly. But, you know, like when I look at World of Warcraft or look at Diablo or look at all these other things, they roll these things out every, what, six months or so when they update the game and add something new to it. Where Fortnite, like you said, it, it gives it away free. But what do they spend on advertising? Did they spend anything or was it word of mouth? Fortnite was amazing. They Fortnite and its original, what? Fortnite kind of was patterned after was PUBG. And that game really was a word of mouth game. It wasn't a big advertising. It was a small group, maybe 30 people developed it and it just caught wildfire. And the play mechanic of this last man standing, which is uh, kind of like a hunger games turned into a real video game became what Fortnite patterned itself on. And it just became huge. And because people love this way of playing all the gaming community, the Twitchers, everybody starts talking about it. 
and it just takes on a life of its own, and all of a sudden your game gets in the hands of millions and millions and millions of players without you having to spend a ridiculous amount of money. No. No, that's that's what's nice. So, was there anything else that like like I look at that and then I'm like, okay, so what kind of money does Candy Crush make? What kind of money do, do those games make comparatively to what a is an lot. obsession? These, these games all make around. You know, these are the billion billion dollar club games you're talking about. There's a game, um, oh, Honor of Kings, which is a Chinese only game, which is making a few billion dollars a year. Um, I think it's going to come here, but it, it tried to come here. It really wasn't as effective. They're going to retool it. It was. It's very popular, like the number one game over in China and Asia. So you have this club of crazy games that are simple, or even if they're complicated, like you know Fortnite. I'd say is a little more complicated than <laughs> Candy Crush. They get this core, hard, just just this fervent audience that puts them in the billionaire club, where these people are willing to buy, purchase. 99 cents at a time, 20 cents at a time, to a point where at the end of the year, they spent 150, 200, 3, 4, 500 dollars on this single game. That's a lot of money to spend, but it's spread out, of course, over 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. God, it's nuts. Paul Lamont's his name. He is our guru when it comes to tech. We appreciate you coming on, my man. I'm always curious about that. I see that and I say, God, that's that. You know what? You want to be a billionaire. You could be living in your you could be living in your mom's garage. And within, you know, six months, you you just bought a five hundred million dollar home because your game's making a billion dollars a second. It's just nuts. In real, appreciate you. In real life. Yeah. Yeah. The Minecraft like that, guy, remember, he yeah. couldn't afford shoes. And in about three years, he was buying the most expensive home in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, outbid old Jay Z and Beyonce there. Appreciate yep. you coming on, man. We'll let you go back and chase those kids around uh, today. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you on the news tonight on an Amber Alert. Exactly. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Talk to you guys later. At Chat Vintage Show is your Twitter. I just, I'm so amazed. Like Fortnite, my son's eight. He doesn't really understand it. He watches it. He's played a little bit. He doesn't really, you know, he gets it, but he doesn't get it. You know. But I hear. You know, when, when I visit my mom, my little brother, who is getting ready to go play uh, his first year of juniors hockey, he's up all night playing this game, him and everybody. And it's so funny because they'll all be hanging out together, and then they'll go, all right, let's go. Let's go all play Fortnite. And then they all go away. When we were kids, producer Phil, remember when you play Atari or something? It's was like, all right, dude, Jim's got a, you know, a brand new PlayStation or, you know, what, a Nintendo or, or Atari. Let's go over and play. Now it's like, hey, everybody, let's get out of the house, go to your own home, and then we'll play a game. Yeah. What's wrong with us? <laughs> it's nuts. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. I look and smell delicious for a reason. You know what it is? Dollar Shave Club, baby. What? What? It feels awesome. You're going to love it. Check this out. It's a membership they've got, right? they got a membership plan, and you should become a member, right? Like, you become a member. It's five bucks to start off, and you get the Daily Essential Starter Set, and there's several of them you can choose. You can't go wrong with any of them. I started with the Amber Lavender Body Cleanser, but you can start with whatever, right? they got a new video, and you can check the whole thing out. But I will tell you this. No joke. The stuff is amazing, right? Like I joke about it and say all that, but I, I, my hair, the products are awesome, and I'm pretty picky about my hair. I try to keep my skin in good nick, if you will, as we would say in England, good nick, mate, uh, in, in good working condition. And they have all of the products you're going to need. Their, their razors are incredible, but it's not just the razors, the shampoos, the conditioner, the, the hair products, the toothpaste, the toothbrush, all of the stuff is amazing. And the, the great thing is you don't have to go anywhere. It's not going to break your budget, and you're going to have adult stuff. For a lot of us, you know, we we got all kinds of grab. We just grab whatever's cheapest. Well, why not grab something that's not going to break your budget, and it's going to be amazing. That's where Dollar Shave Club comes in. Do this right now. Go to their website. Join. Pick your starter set. Five bucks. After that, the stuff ships normal price. Check it out for yourself. You can't go wrong. Use my code. It's going to save you money right there. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. Movies, movies, movies. One movie that's coming out today. Well, let's just say this. It could be awful, and it might be a cold hit eventually. Chad Benson Show.
A bird in the hand is worth 140 on Twitter, so tweet your beak off. A Chad Benson Show Twitter. And if instant gratification is your thing, hit Chad up on Instagram at Chad Benson. Your bird will thank you. Melissa McCarthy and her band of foul-mouthed puppets are looking to unseat the current champ, Crazy Rich Asians. Someone out there <gasps> is killing puppets. McCarthy's R-rated Happy Time Murders isn't tracking well, maybe around 15 million, for the hardcore puppet party from Jim Henson's son, Brian. That means Crazy Rich Asians might repeat at number one. They're crazy rich. Also opening Axel. You good boy. It's your standard boy meets robotic dog story. It may not break five million. So this movie that's coming out today, and I, I had a chance to go see it last night. I turned it down. I said, you know, I don't feel like going to see it. I, I went and saw, because uh, Thursdays I like to have my, I call it my movie night where I just kind of veg. And I go, and so I went and saw uh, The Spy Who Dumped Me. I was going to see The Black Klansman. But part of the reason I want to go see that is because everything we deal with is so divisive and so much anymore. I'm like, you know, I want... Two hours of mindlessness, and I got it. The movie wasn't horrible. It was actually kind of fun. Uh, it's another one of those movies, but you're like, hey, you could have done more with it. <laughs> the Happy Time Murders, I feel the same way. First of all, the fact that the Jim Henson son has done this and made a rated R movie with puppets is interesting. But you could tell from the trailer that it was probably just going to be awful. <laughs> Two of the most decorated offices in this department. What do you see? Looks like a robbery gone wrong to me. This wasn't a robbery. This was a hit. What the Someone out there <gasps> is killing puppets. Hey, handsome. Look- I'm a woman. That's okay. Yeah, that's even better. Got a good time for you. <laughs> We're gonna catch the bastards who did these murders. Those bodies are gonna start piling up. You're one of the best damn cops I've ever seen. I'll have your badge for this. I'm in the f- FBI. Oh, yeah? What's that stand for? F- you big idiot? Ah. It just, it, you, it, you're like, oh, and then you watch some of the trailer and you think, you just missed. And they're calling Vanity Fair and Rolling Stones. It's like the worst movie of the year. And there's movies that are fun that can be like this. Like the vegetable fruit food movie a couple of years ago with, uh, you know, all the stars that were in that. And then there's something like this where you think you just missed the plot. You, you, you had a chance and you, you sucked. You had a chance to do something cool and you overcooked it and it's just awful. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three 538 At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. I do. I'm not lying. I would never lie to you. By the way, today's donut, chocolate old-fashioned. Boom! Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. in thoughts and punk rock in life it's the chad benson show the left i think it's more that they just they really do hate deplorables they hate the walmart crowd they and that's what they see in trump they're able to attack um the gun culture on walmart and middle class middle americans by attacking trump without getting called on it because you know technically he's a billionaire who's president but really at the bottom of it they just think he's icky yeah and this is interesting. This was Ann Coulter from the other day, and I found this to be very interesting. And 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 in talking to, because doing this business, doing this is my career. Which, by the way, I love my job. There is nothing I would choose to do any different. You know, I gave up my professional stripping for this, right? You know, so did Phil. Phil, Phil, and I. We 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 regained our amateur status, right? We've done all the. There was nothing I would ever do. I love I, I love playing soccer. I love doing the things that I was able to do, but this is what I love. And it gives me the opportunity to talk to people, to engage people of different political, you know, thoughts. And and sometimes it, it, it gets touchy. And it's both sides, by the way. I just want to say it's both sides. I don't think people understand that. But one thing that people on the left don't understand about Trump and Trump supporters 
And I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm not talking about people that like, yeah, I want my president to be successful. I want the president to be successful. He drives me crazy at times, but he also does some good things. I can be honest about that. That's why you listen to the show. But the people that are that are so behind Trump, that they drive me crazy because they threaten me all the time. They say stuff that's just insane. You have no idea sometimes some of the stuff you get that's so vile. But what I don't think the people on the left understand is a lot of people who support Trump, they want to change. They wanted the system to be torn down because the system not only failed them, it failed to be what it was supposed to be. What it started out to be, it morphed into something else. Trump is their sledgehammer. Trump is their voice of frustration. Trump is not doing what politicians have done for years, which is kick the can down the road, ignore everything, say everything that you're supposed to say correctly. Now, there are times that Trump needs to be, well, better, if you will, in situations and the way he handles situations and people. Because a lot of the stuff that, that that comes back on him is it is self inflicted, and and just for hey, I just don't as a human being, you're like you don't want to do that again, but then you do it again. But I don't think people understand that on the left, and even some people on the right, because they don't understand who they're dealing with. And by that I mean not Trump, I mean the people out there who were sick and tired of the same old same. They're frustrated. He's their sledgehammer. He's their mouth. He's their voice when they felt voiceless. They could tweet. They can text. They can send emails. Right? They can do all of those things. But the reality is, is this guy is an extension of them. That's the way they feel. They're pissed. They're angry. They're sick and tired of it. They feel everything was rigged against them. But mostly what they feel is, hey, this wasn't set up this way. This has become massive and overreaching and just pisses people off. And they want to see it uncomfortable. They want to see a bit of it broken. They want to see a bit of it stomped upon. They want to see a bit of it exposed. They want to see something that's not politics. Doesn't mean he's doing it the right way. Doesn't mean he's doing it the wrong way all the time. He's going to make mistakes, and he has. He has. But the reality is, is that's what the left doesn't get. And that's what someone on the right doesn't get sometimes about Trump. We wanted to see what it wasn't like to have, you know, not have a politician in there. Well, it's a giant disaster. Okay. That's the way you feel. That's the way you feel. I don't think all hope is lost. And I think some of the stuff he's done has been fantastic. I think some of it has been, ugh. And I think eventually, and, and the funny thing is for a lot of these people that I talk to that are emotionally tied to Trump, they realize that it's he's doing stuff that's nuts. They realize that. They do. But at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that they think, you know what? You've allowed it to get this bad. This is what you guys get. How do you feel about this now? And it's funny because I there there <laughs> It is funny because when I do talk to a lot of people, the left doesn't understand that. See, because the left's idea is the the right. These people they want less government, they want less intrusion, they want less of this. They want they want what they look at the Constitution. They say we want that, we want that. And they look over to the left, and the left's like, "You guys are stupid, and you're simple minded, and 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 your knuckles drag, and you can barely read, and you don't know what a latte is, and and you don't go to art house movies, and we're better than you. We know what's better than you, and blah 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 blah." And 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 they're saying, "No, we want less. We want more freedoms. We're sick and tired of government." I don't think I don't, I don't think the left ever has ever gotten that. I don't. I don't think they've got that. It's it's funny the way that the, 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 the two fight, the left and the right over this stuff, when, yeah, you know what? There's a lot of people out there that they, they do look down upon these people in middle America. Middle America is beautiful. Middle America is amazing. 
There's a lot of people that live in middle America. But beach to beach, from Malibu to Manhattan, that th- those people, they don't. They don't care about that. They just hate him. He's evil. He's bad. He's annoying. And, and they just said, you know what? You guys have got off the track. You've made everything about gender. You've made identity politics. You want overreach. You want everything you want to turn into government and allow government to, and you don't get it. We don't even like the right side of the aisle. We wanted change across the board. We wanted somebody that was going to go in and be a fist, if you will. We wanted somebody who was going to be a sledgehammer. We want somebody who's going to walk in and be a bull in a china shop. And he has been. And he has. Doesn't mean it's been all good. Doesn't mean it has. As we all know, there's a lot of drama. But that's what they wanted. And I don't think people understood that. And I still don't think they understand that. Because the left is like, well, why would you want to break government? We should have more government. And these people are like, we don't want any more government. We don't want any more telling us what to do, where to go, how to buy things that we want to buy, what we want to buy, where we should buy it, how we should drive it. What We we don't want any of that. We don't. We don't want people that are going to go to Washington and stay forever. We don't want any of that. We wanted somebody who was going to go in and expose crap. And along the way, at times Trump's been exposed. But they don't care about that. Their end game is they want to see the system kind of get kicked in the balls, if you will. It's kind of what they want. They want him to go in there and break things because they feel like, hey, what started out as something great has moved far off the path and maybe this is the only way to shock it. You ever ever go to a pool, right? And you have a pool, and what do you do? You shock it every once in a while. You put so much chlorine and stuff in it. What do you do? Doom. You want to reset. And I have a feeling, and whether it's 2020 or 2024, whenever, there will be a reset of things. And people may step back and go, okay. But maybe it needed this. Again, I think Trump, at times, has been fantastic. I think at other times, you could step back and go, ah, it's too much drama. And a lot of this stuff is unnecessary. And a lot of this stuff has nothing to do with anything. And a good portion of this is self-inflicted. But I think a lot of people out there don't quite get the fact that so many people wanted government to be uncomfortable. Wanted government put on notice. Wanted government. Not just left side of the aisle, but government in general. Wanted to change Across the board. And they got it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. We're following other stories today. And a sad day uh, for the Maverick. A guy that for a lot of times, he was he was a bit of that way. You know, when you look at politics. But, you know, eh, take away all of that stuff as a human being. You look and you say this is this is a this is a sad day because uh, uh, John McCain has decided that uh, he's had enough fighting with this this horrible disease and and he's lived a great life and it's time now to get ready for for the end of that life. In a statement, the McCain family says the senator has chosen to discontinue medical treatment of his aggressive glioblastoma. He was diagnosed last summer, and his family says he has surpassed expectations for his survival. On Twitter, Senator McCain's wife Cindy and daughter Megan expressed their love for his supporters. Cindy McCain writing, God bless everyone who has cared for my husband along this journey. Emily Rao, ABC News. And uh, I don't know how much time he has left. Usually when they announce something like this, it isn't uh, isn't very long. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it, it's, uh, well, it, it could be any day. And when you look back upon his life and the things that he has done uh, and and the story and the journey, it is one that you, you, you look in and you say, who's going to play him in the movie? Because there will be a movie and there should be a movie. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Don't you feel that way? Take away the right or the left. If you're a Trump supporter, because a lot of them I talk to, they don't care about politics. Right? They don't care about the politics side of it. The minutiae of it. 
They care about the fact that government is broken, and both sides have broken it. And they've broken it for their benefit. And they look at Trump again as their mouthpiece, as their sledgehammer, as their voice. How do you feel? Text the program. You tweet at us as well, at Chad Benson. <laughs> my pillow. So last night, I didn't have my pillow with me. What? Yeah. I didn't have my pillow. And let me tell you about my sleep. It was non-existent. Non-existent. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. And I do mean awful. I will, I, I didn't fall asleep. I went to bed about 10.30. Got home from, you know, 11... 12, 1, I'm still up, I'm tossing, I'm turning, I can't get comfortable. I'm like, oh, goodness me. That's how much I love my pillow. I may have three, four hours of sleep total all night. It was awful. I won't make that mistake again. My pillow is incredible. You're going to love it if you have trouble sleeping or if even if you sleep well, but you think, you know what, I like sleep a little bit better or I just want a better pillow, this is what it's all about. Here's what they're doing, 50% off right now. Two premium pillows, two go-anywhere pillows, four total pillows, 50% off. Call 800-983-4975. Go mightypillow.com. You can use the code Benson. When you do, it saves you 50%. You're going to get a better night's rest and It is the world's most comfortable pillow. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, or call 800-983-4975, or MyPillow.com. Either way, use promo code Benson, saves you 50% right there. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. We're going to talk about parenting and the lunacy in the world that we live in in parenting, because it is crazy. Plus, drinking, baby. How much should you drink, healthy-wise, if you will? Can you consume one, two, five, huh? We'll find out. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. There is a new global study out this morning that finds that the harmful effects of alcohol consumption greatly outweigh any potential benefits. Research published in the medical journal The Lancet found there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. According to the study, there's a strong association between alcohol consumption and increased risk of cancer. More than 2% of women and almost 7% of men worldwide die from alcohol-related health problems every year. What? What? I, I always take these things with a grain of salt. I don't drink. I've never had a drink in my life. I grew up around alcoholism, right? My father died of uh, a drug overdose and heart attack at the same time. It's like his third one, fourth one by the time he was 35 years old. Uh, I, but I take every, look, I look at life as moderation, right? Moderation. And if you abuse anything, and when, I, when they do these studies, one of the other things, when they do all of these studies, whether it's bacon or whatever it is, you, you, the fact is, is they're not, Beings that are grown in labs that have the same environmental life, the same genetics, hereditary, all of that. It's it's not the same. So you don't know what somebody is going to react to. No matter how deep uh, this wide swath they may cast when they do these things, you just don't know. They're just, you know, they're in the end, they're trying to find out. And I think we all know, if you drink too much, you're going to pay a price, right? I think we all know that. If you drink too much, you will pay a price. If you eat too much, you will pay a price. If you are lazy too much, you will pay a price. Whatever you do that you overdo, you can even work out too much, and you will pay a price. And genetics are huge. Look at that Bob Harper guy, the guy from uh, The Biggest Loser. Look how fit and just amazing. He had a heart attack. It's genetics. And you'll always see somebody who's like 116 years old and she's smoking a corn cob pipe. She's like, I eat a pound of bacon a day. I drink three Mountain Dews and I smoke my tobacco. It's genetics. It is. So you got to take this with a grain of salt. It's always about balance, right? Should I have eight pieces of bacon? Should I have 10 pieces of bacon? How about nine? Balance. Should I have 12 donut holes? 24 donut holes. 
16. It's about balance. Chad. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could find you could literally go find scientists and say, look, I want you to to come up with some sort of 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 study that says donuts are great. And they'll find somebody who's fit. They'll maybe 10 people. They'll give them a donut a day and then they'll eat 1800 calories and that's it. And they'll lose weight and they'll say, look, he eats a donut a day. And, it, it, you know, it's all about moderation, people. It's that simple. Hey, parenting and shaming. When did we get here? How did we get to the point where we are so insane as to let a child walk outside and walk a dog and we have to call the police on that? What? Oh, yeah. Wait do you hear this. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. And there's been a lot of misconduct at the FBI and the Department of Justice that I don't believe he wants to get in the middle of because he doesn't want to get caught in some sort of obstruction probe himself. He never should have recused. He bowed to the pressure of the swamp. He made a mistake by forgetting some random meeting for 30 seconds with a Russian ambassador. And then all of a sudden he caved. So I understand Trump's concern. Jesse Waters right there about whether or not Sessions should or shouldn't have recused himself, but he did, and that's all that matters. You know, the biggest issue out of all of this is is the parameters that weren't set, which has allowed this thing to blossom and to mushroom into other things. That's where he should have sat down with Rod Rosenstein and said, hey, Rod, hot Rod, let me ask you a question. I'm going to recuse myself. I can trust you with this. Yes. Okay, good. This is what I want you to do. We need to have parameters in what people are going to be investigated for, and that's it. All right? This is the lane we're setting up. If it veers this way, if it veers that way, we're like, eh. Just like the game, hospital when you were a kid, remember? Surgery, whatever that thing was called, operation. Eh. You touch the side, you get outside, reel you back in. It's that simple. It's that simple. But instead, now what you've got is a fight. You've got a fight. You've got Sessions and Trump fighting. Sessions actually answering back to Trump saying, look, 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 I'm not political. This isn't being politicized. I am here. Everything's done above board. Trump's like, you're not loyal. You shouldn't have allowed this to happen. Everything is political. Everything's politicized. It's all weaponized. That's what the DOJ is. Chuck Todd saying, well, Essentially, don't you want to then weaponize it in your favor? Of course, everybody wants to. If you take over a company, right? So you, you, you're you hired as a manager or whatever, right? You take over a company, you buy into a company, whatever it is, you come in. You're going to want to surround yourself with people you know, people you can trust. You're not going to get rid of everybody, right? There's a reason you bought the company. There's a reason you wanted to work there. So, yeah, you're not going to. But you want to surround yourself with people that are that are going to, you know, have your best interest. I get that. I do. Absolutely. Trump right now has hired these people. He's got to let them do their job. Well, he stepped away. Well, you should have got this. Hey, look, here's the deal. I appoint you. You going to recuse yourself? Well, it should have been discussed before, but we didn't know this was going to happen. You didn't think something potentially could happen? You don't think out of all the things? Let's think about all the things. I'm hiring you. You, you know. Oh, I forgot about the time I sat down and I met with this. Pro- oh, no. Now I'm going to be. I've got to recuse myself because I could be in a situation where I. Well, then maybe you're not the person for the job. But he got the job. That was on Trump's call. It was like Melania said, you should give him the job. Right. Right. Jared. Then go to Spice. Spice, should I give him the job? No. It is what it is. This is where we are. And if he's going to fire him at this point in time, there could be 
some serious issues if he appoints somebody who then stops all of this and people can stand up even on the right and go, yeah, maybe there's some obstruction of justice going on. Let it play itself out. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. This story, you know, it's weird. As a, when, when I was a kid, and I think all of us have done this, like, it's like when I'm a parent, I'm going to parent like this, right? I'm going to take the things that my mom and dad did well, and I'm going to take the things that they didn't do well, and I'm going to try to do the opposite. But somewhere along the line, we have this 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 group of parents that has essentially said, I'm going to take all that my mom and dad did well or didn't do well to raise me, and I'm going to throw it all out the window, and I'm going to stand over my child and every other child that's out there and judge them and make sure that they're all parenting on the same kind of lines that I'm parenting, which is helicoptery. And if you dare step out of that, we will shame you, which includes allowing your kids to go outside by themselves. I think it's a crazy waste of resources. That's how Corey Wyden views the DCFS investigation launched after someone spotted her daughter, Dorothy, walking the family dog alone. Shortly after the eight-year-old got home, a Wilmette police officer rang the doorbell. Oh, I was, like, really scared. So, walking the dog. Pretty big dog, too. Walking the dog now. Somebody's, uh, this child, there's no... Nobody's, there's no grown up with the child and the dog. What is happening? We live in the safest time in human history. Again, the ch- and, and, and the little area they live in, in Illinois, is super safe. Safer than, than, than the average in America. Chances of your child being snatched up are slim to none. And if they are usually taken, it's by who? Somebody they know. You know, I was talking to, to Jack over the weekend, and for those of you who don't know, my son's eight years old, and he we were at the, the hotel, and we were swimming and stuff, and I said, oh, yeah, I said, you know, when I was your age, we had a pool out back. We all swam. Moms and dads weren't out there. Oh, my God. What happened? I said, we swam, because we all knew how to swim. We all knew how to swim. We were just swamming around. So we were just swimming. That's what we did. We went outside and played, and the rules were what? When it's dark and the street light comes on, get your ass home. Moms would call other moms, go, hey, is my kid over there? And that was it. And if they weren't over there, they didn't lose their mind. Nowadays, you go outside, somewhere along the line, we've got to the point where you think a child is outside by themselves at some point in time. They're going to get snatched up by somebody. So I need to call the authorities because this is what the authorities should be dealing with. She said, are you the one whose daughter just took a little white dog for a walk? And I said, yeah. And um, I said, why did she do something wrong? And she's like, well, how old is she? And I said, she's eight. And she said, oh, okay, because we got a call that it was an unintended five-year-old. Wyden says the officer said that was fine and left. But that wasn't the end of the family's troubles. So, an unattended five-year-old. It's always that do-gooder parent. My mom has one, because I have little brothers who are adopted. They're actually my little nephews. Uh, who They're adopted. They'll be outside on their bike, and they'll be riding their bike around, and they're on their scooter, and they have a helmet, and somebody will go, you know, your children are outside riding without a helmet. It's like, go inside. Just get over it. My mom's at the point now, it's like, uh, because they're still kids. My mom parents, like, it's the 70s. I'm like, mom, you can't do that anymore. You can't. You got a parent like every one of these kids is going to be snatched up. You have to parent that way. You 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 have to. You have to parent like everybody is out to call CPS cuz they know what's best for those kids. And she's like it's insane. I'm like it is insane. This is not how we should parent children. Again, we want them to grow, and we want them to take steps away from the nest. We talked about it the other day, right? Which is, we parent now as if we don't parent. We It's all about equality. There, there no longer 
our children, they're our peers. And that's wrong. That's wrong. So apparently, whoever called the police didn't think the police were a good enough judge of what was okay and not okay, and then they called DCFS. The police did not. So what happens? Little girl takes a little dog for a walk, right? She's eight in a safe neighborhood around the block. Somebody calls the police. Police come and go, eh, this is stupid. Police say, yeah, no, this is dumb. We're, we're stepping away. So then, then they call, yes, are you ready for it? They call Child Protective Services because it wasn't enough because the police didn't take the child away. An investigation was launched and Wyden hired an attorney to clear her name. The matter was resolved in less than two weeks, but Wyden says she was left with many questions and felt mom shamed. Of course, that's because 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 everybody has a voice now. We've got all of these opportunities to have voices. So we give everybody a voice. People who don't understand the situation. Like, I'm always, you know what, what, and I don't know if you guys, I mean, I'm sure you think about it too. You're outside, right? You're working in your yard. Or, when, when I was a kid growing up, front yard, the streets, everywhere was where we were. Everywhere. Everywhere is where we were. When I'm a kid... Now it's like, and you may, yeah, people slow down. You know where to slow down. There's kids out here and stuff like that. You know, hey, they all wave to you. You'd be playing hockey or football or baseball, stickball, whatever you're doing in the street and, and in the yard. And we'd all wave to each other. It'd be great and everything was fine. Nowadays, I drive down the street. I'll see kids anywhere. And if there is a kid outside, there's like eight people with them to protect them as if it's the Dalai Lama. And this is the this is the reincarnation. We gotta protect this kid. It is so stupid. I'm a homeschool mom and I'm always with my kids. You can accuse me of a lot of things, but not supervising them is not one of them. I don't think it should have ever even made it past the hotline that a little girl walking her dog needs to be investigated. No, no. No, it shouldn't. And trust me, I'm sure the cop went <sighs> as we all went, <sighs> because it's stupid. I just I just don't and you wonder why we have these snowflakes and the trigger warnings and all of this stuff. And it's always that do gooder neighbor that butts in somewhere. Right? It's always that do gooder neighbor that butts in somewhere. And the next thing you know, your ass is being called and you hear about these cases more and more. Where they think they know what's best for your child. No, I think it's best my child plays outdoors. I think it's best that my child had some freedom from mom and dad. I think it's best that my child learn certain boundaries that were boundaries we all learned. Like climbing a damn tree. It's nuts. And we've taken that away. And the sad thing is, not only have we taken that away, even if you're found by the state not to have done anything wrong, it doesn't stop people from wanting to put their nose in your business and tell you how bad you are at being a parent because you're not with your child every 24 hours a day. Ah, God. So sad. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Just, I just, I just think to myself, my God, what? And, and so my, my mom said last time I was out there a couple weeks ago. She said, you know, Chad, these kids, we we get people calling us or saying, hey, your kids are outside and doing something all the time. And they live in a cul-de-sac, right? It's not like they live in some main thoroughfare, and. and And she goes, the things we used to do when we were younger, right? How they used to allow for just go do your thing is amazing. She goes, I go, mom, you'd be in jail. She goes, oh, absolutely. She goes, but everybody'd be in jail. I said, yeah. But they don't want that anymore. They don't want kids to have freedom. They don't. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Chad Benson Show.
States? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. What? what? The opinion piece, New York Times. Who said it? For that show, Who Wears It Best or whatever it is. This one is Who Said It? Gotti or Trump? You guys ready for this one? He doesn't know me, but he would go down fast and hard, crying all the way. Was that John Gotti, the crime boss, the head of the Gambino crime family, or was it the president of the United States of America, Donald Trump? If you said Donald Trump, you were correct. Ding, ding. Winner, 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 winner. Who said it? You guys ready for this one? That's why I want honest loyalty. Was it the Teflon Don or was it El Presidente? If you said Donald Trump, you were correct. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, my Lord. Some of these things you're just like, he said that? He he said, he said? I, I don't believe I'm lying. Trump or Gotti? Tough one right there. If you said Donald Trump, you were wrong. That was John Gotti. Oh, my Lord. Apparently, they're equating him to being a crime boss. Very interesting. That's the way they do it there, kids. That's the way that they do it over there. Trump is right in some ways, man. He didn't give a fair shake. Right? Look, I can... I try to give Trump a fair shake. And I know for a lot of people out there, they want more. I had somebody text me the other day says, Chad, your only job is to get Republicans elected. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not my job. It's, not, it's nowhere near my job. It's nowhere near my job. My job is to entertain, to have fun, to inform. Like, that's what I, it's not to get somebody elected. I'm never going to tell you ever who you should vote for, ever, never, never, ever, ever would I tell you who to vote for. Vote for whoever you think is best for the job, not who is the person you can stand the least, but who you think is best for the job. I would rather, if I had a ballot at 10 and I only thought five people were worth voting for, I'd leave everything else blank. I would. But that's not my job, by the way. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter car shield. Shing. I love this. I, I get text messages now and emails from people and, and tweets, and, and I've had friends and family who signed up for Car Shield. And a good majority of them, their cars have lasted. They've had no problems with it. But I've had several friends and people that, that have signed up for it, and they're like, dude, this is amazing. I'm right? Like, it's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. So I had a friend take her car in, and she wanted to cancel. She's like, I don't know if I'm going to need it. The car's only got like 60,000 miles on it. She said, when's your warranty due? She's like, it's out at 60,000 miles. I said, okay. I said, just keep it. She's like, I don't know. I said, keep it. So she kept it. Three months after, so she'd had it for like seven months, but three months after the warranty had expired, because she'd gone over that 60,000 miles, she... Took it in. Guess what? A little routine checkup maintenance. Boom. You got issues to the tune of about like 1900 bucks, something like that. And she's like, she was amazed at what Car Shield did for her. They got her a rental car for like two days for free, right? She had taken it to the dealership and she thought she was going to have to have it towed somewhere else because she thought, oh, Car Shield's going to make us go somewhere else. No, no. They did it right there. That's what you need to do. Join Car Shield today. You'll be stoked. 800 car 6100. Mention code Benson. 800 car 6100. Mention code Benson or visit carshield.com. That's carshield.com. That saves you 10%, kids. It is the best. You will thank me. You know, really, you'll thank Carshield. Deductible may apply. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C H A D B E N S O N. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show.
independent in thought, and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is cowardly backstabbing by the President of the United States against an Attorney General who has shown enormous integrity and backbone in standing up to Mr. Trump. The President's been trying to force a resignation of Jeff Sessions when he, the President, has the right to fire him if he wishes to do so. But the President is too fearful of doing that because it may subject him to obstruction of justice charges. So instead, he's trying to use this backdoor effort of constant berating and attacking on the attorney general so the attorney general will resign it is interesting and yesterday trump came out and he went after sessions still pissed about the fact that you know i I hear from trump supporters trump supporters trump supporters it's all about loyalty chad it's all about loyalty it's all about loyalty i said yeah it is loyalty is a two-way street but it's also about doing the right thing now I don't think Sessions should have recused himself. I don't think so. Not at all. But he did. And we're in this situation. And going after him and being pissed, you just can't do it at this point in time. I'm still surprised that Sessions is there because based on the longevity of everybody else I see, uh, hey, it's not been there for a lot of people to stick around. You know, Tillerson, eh, Spicy, the Mooch, Amarosa, and the list continues to grow. But Sessions is still there. He's still there. And I know he wants to fire him, but can't. The Dems are very strong in the Justice Department. I put an attorney general that never took control of the Justice Department, Jeff Sessions, never took control of the Justice Department. And, uh... It's a sort of an incredible thing. Okay. All right. So all the Dems, the Justice Department is nothing but Democrats. Deep state. Let's throw that out there. Deep state, Chad. Deep state. <laughs> How deep? Are we like mid-level deep? Are we like, have we gone through the Earth's crust, right? Are we breaking through? Are we? It's like, how deep? How deep is it? Is it so deep that people don't even know they're that deep? How deep? So we've got this, right? We got this, 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 and apparently everybody who is there is working against the president. All right. Now Sessions fired back. Sessions typically ignores the president's attacks, but this time he's pushing back in a statement saying, I took control of the Department of Justice the day I was sworn in. While I am attorney general, the actions of the Department of Justice will not be improperly influenced by political considerations. End quote. (sighs) Everything's politics. I get it. And we've seen with the FBI. Look, I'm not saying things can't be weaponized. I don't think people don't have biases. But there are also people out there who can have biases. But they can look at something and do the right thing. If you guys hear that Paul Manafort juror that said, look, I wanted him to be innocent. She wore her mega hat every single day to 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 the courtroom. She is a huge Trump supporter. And she says, but in the end, he was guilty. Some people can put their biases behind them. But this is a fight that's going on. And part of it is, much like what Obama found out, it's you, you want that legacy. Trump still feels that there's going to be an asterisk always by his name. Like always, like every day there's going to be an asterisk by his name. And I don't care if Mueller comes out tomorrow and says, look, here's the deal. While Trump surrounded himself with people that when we delved deeper into it, eh, they weren't very good people and they had done some stuff. The reality of whether or not Russia was involved with Trump and Trump was involved in Russia and that they had cooked up some sort of thing to defraud America's democracy and the people, eh, we just didn't find any of that. There are always going to be people out there that are going to put an asterisk by Trump's name. You You can't escape that. Always. And the right would have done it if it was Hillary. There was always being asterisks by her name. Because we've gotten that way with our tribalism. The fight now, though, is with Sessions. And he, you know, he's asked everybody. He's asked people, hey, can I pardon Paul Manafort? No, because he did something wrong. 
no matter how bad you feel, because he was looked into because of your campaign, the reality is he still did something wrong. He still did something wrong. So in saying that, should he or shouldn't he? Because you know he's asked the questions, can I fire Jeff? The idea that Jeff Sessions might be fired because he's not a political hack is a very, very bad idea. It's a bad idea for the Constitution. It's the it's a bad idea for public trust. It's a bad idea for the Department of Justice. And frankly, it's a really bad idea for the President of the United States. And I've communicated that message to my colleagues today, and I've communicated that message to the President. That's Ben Sass. He's a Republican. Look, we can sit here. You know, okay, look, what Sessions should have done is he probably shouldn't have recused himself. And in doing so, he should have said, look, here, Rod, Rod Rosenstein, come here, I need to talk to you, Rod. They're going to do the investigation. You're going to set the parameters. The parameters are going to be this. It's going to be narrow. You look at this. You can't look at everything in the world. We're out here looking for this. So unless they're looking at this, we're, we're, this is the lane we're in. And if you go outside the lane, much like the game operation, And that didn't happen. So instead, what you get is all of the, you know, friendly fire, if you will. So there wasn't parameters set. He shouldn't have recused himself, but he did. We can argue all day. Should he or shouldn't he? Should he or shouldn't he? It, it's, it, it, it's, it is frustrating. But when I hear people say, God, Trump values loyalty. I said, loyalty is a two-way street. Trump at times can be emotionally quick to fire things off. And I get it. When you think somebody's flipping on you or whatever's going on, you know, it is, it, it, you sit back and you say, in the end, whether they're loyal or not loyal, depending on how you see it, remember this, you hired them all. They weren't thrust upon you saying, this is the group you've got to work with. No, you said, I'll take Amorosa. Jeff Sessions, I'll take you, right? Spicy, I think this will be your job. How about the mooch there? Right? Rex Tillerson. You hired these people. So let's remember that. Look, I think this thing should never have gotten to the point where it is now. And I do believe that he's right in certain terms when it says it's a witch hunt. Because I think at all costs, they're doing everything they can to cap, you know, to, to, to capture him in something. I think we can. I think if you're an independent Republican Democrat, you've got common sense. You can see through the BS. You can realize that what should have been a, a narrow lane specifically about this has widened to a, a 10 lane freeway double stacked and that's an issue it is but at some point in time you got to step back and say all right you know what it's going to run its course we're going to let it do anything i haven't done anything wrong they haven't found anything on me and because of that i'm just going to let it run its course because if i do make a move at this point in time potential obstruction of justice Republicans are saying, don't do it. There are some issues. And you don't want that kind of political blowback. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Already getting the tweets and the texts from the Trump supporters who are telling me what a horrible, horrible liberal I am and how they're never going to listen again. And I say, okay, good luck. Have fun. You always text me and say that. Then you text me again and tweet me again. I'm just curious. Just curious. Some of these people, it's like the blind faith. It's just they're following blindly. Again, I haven't said anything bad about Trump. I just said at some point in time, you got to step back and say, all right, I put these people in positions. I feel they haven't done their job. I fired some. Some have walked away. Some have turned on me. I've turned on some of them. But remember, I hired them all. Time to think about it. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me, love hearing from you. Uh, it is sad 
that uh, this was announced earlier today coming out of the John McCain camp. In a statement, the McCain family says the progress of his brain cancer and the advance of age have rendered their verdict. The family going on to say with John McCain's usual strength of will, he has chosen to discontinue medical treatment. The family is now thanking those who have kept him in their prayers. Yeah, he has decided that uh, that is it. It is over. There's nothing in use. 81 years old. Uh, he had that surgery for a blood clot, and they found it was a brain uh, brain tumor, glastoma, and it's just it's gotten worse. And they thought he would, uh, you know, a lot of, not a lot of people thought he was going to make it through last year, let alone as far as he has now. And then there's going to be the question that's going to be asked about, okay, now that this is are you going to give up your seat? Are you going to, I mean, how is this all going to work? There is that question out there. It sounds horrible. You're like, oh my God. But there is a question, right? And with Kavanaugh and all this stuff going on, there's going to be that question. But it is sad. And, and, and I want to see how the White House handles it because there haven't been, you know, if you're new to the world of politics, you know, and you're here because of Trump and you didn't really follow anything before that, McCain is evil and maybe don't know the backstory of a guy who sacrificed for his country in in many ways. And uh, I want to see how that's going to be handled. It's going to be very, very interesting. But, uh, uh, you know, his daughter, uh, Megan, uh, very nice. I know Megan uh, through radio. Obviously, she was in radio for a while. She's on The View now. She came out and she is today and she was talking, you know, she came out. And she's talked about, you know, all of this stuff with her dad and, and how strong her, her dad is. You know, I mean, not to be macabre and make this too serious, but he's not scared of death at all. And I don't understand it because I am petrified. And I think that he has taught me. We've spent a lot of time together in the last three months hiking. I've done nothing but cook for my parents. I've cooked every possible pioneer woman chef recipe that exists in the world. I've been doing nothing but cooking for my parents and like going with my dad to treatments. And he has such an incredible perspective on life and how to live. And that was last year, and a lot of people didn't think she, uh, he was going to make it this long, and he has. And, uh, you know, Godspeed to a guy who's done a lot for our country and uh, ran against uh, Barack Obama and lost, he and Palin. But uh, uh, a guy that will be remembered for a lot of people as a maverick, and for some people, uh, you know, he's uh, he's a thorn in Trump's side. But uh, I like to look at the entire scope of the work, not just a, a one issue, uh, especially if fandom, if you will, is all because Trump is is that. No, there's a lot of things about him that I like and some things I didn't. But, you know, this isn't the time to sit here and pull him apart or pick him apart. Uh, we can look at the entire scope and said, what a hell of a life he led. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Hey, if you're over the age of 50, I got something for you. And it's free. Ooh, tell me more, Chad. I like free. That's a good number. AMAC. Association of Mature American Citizens. You're over the age of 50. You look around and you say, what do I got out there? Well, there's ARP. They're left-leaning. I'm not really a fan of a lot of stuff they do and they advocate for. What do I have? Well, 10 years ago, along came AMAC, and they're advocating on your behalf for the things you believe in. Common sense immigration laws and reform. Fixing Medicare. Social Security reform. Things like that. On top of that, their benefits are too numerous to mention. How about 40% off movie tickets, Disneyland, Disney World, retail, restaurant, travel discounts, plenty of them, and so much more. And did I mention the price was free for a year membership? That's right. There's no cost. There's no tricks. There's no credit card required. You sign up, and guess what? You get a free year membership. Go to amac.us forward slash Chad. That's amac.us forward slash Chad. Or you can call them 888 355-1668 888-355-1668 or online at amac.us forward slash chat at chad benson show is your twitter c-h-a-d-b-e-n-s-o-n it's the chad benson show welcome to chad no not the country the institution the chad benson show 
Prosecutors say Krista Seswick worked with dentists in an office called County Dental. They were under their service. She's the dentist. But she wasn't one. Her 48-count indictment charges her with committing insurance fraud, forging prescriptions, and practicing dentistry without a license. These including teeth extraction. Leading, the DA says, to infections and more like having to remove the tooth completely. And though Seswick was just arrested, somehow they say she's been doing this for at least seven years. The charges date back to 2012, and there are at least 18 alleged victims. Oh, my God. Can you imagine anything worse than the amateur dentist? <laughs> Could you imagine that? Oh, God. Have you ever watched any of those old Western shows or something, and they're like, take the kid? I was watching A Rifleman because I, I love old Westerns, and they take Mark in, right? So that's that's uh, uh, Lucas McCain's kid in The Rifleman, and he's got a bad tooth, and they're going to pull it. And all they do is just stick, like, pliers in there and yank it out. Like, that's... And you're just like, ah! I could not imagine, like, anything is like, anything. Because people already have a fear of dentist, Anyways. And then you go, and it's a pretend dentist. Like, she worked in the front office, and she thought, I could do that. <laughs> just need all the stuff. I could totally do that. No, you can't. You cannot do that. Oh, my. <laughs> Just. And a tooth extraction. Oh, my God. You ever done anything? I had a friend once. This is a funny story. A little side note here. Uh, his buddy, his buddy, his name was Steve. Punk rock, total latchkey kid. Like, his mom would disappear for two or three days at a time. He had braces on forever. And one day he's like, yeah, I got to get these braces off. Like, his mom had stopped taking him to the dentist or the orthodontist for years. So we pulled his his braces off. But it would, it, the, how long they were on his teeth, this is how, it, it, they would, they would just come off so easy. He took his own braces off. His teeth were still a mess because his mom had stopped taking him to the orthodontist, so they, the orthodontist, so they never actually went and tightened or anything. It was just so, <laughs> that was our backyard punk rock days. Both of us had mohawks at the time. I do not recommend that, kids. I do not recommend that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Now, many of you are going, oh, my God, I probably did something like that, too, when I was a kid. All of us have done stupid stuff, but we didn't go to pretend dentist to get a root canal. 323-538-2423. How much should you drink? And mom shaming. Yes, we live in a day and age and we like to shame parents for stuff like letting your kids go outdoors. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. And there's been a lot of misconduct at the FBI and the Department of Justice that I don't believe he wants to get in the middle of because he doesn't want to get caught in some sort of obstruction probe himself. He never should have recused. He bowed to the pressure of the swamp. He made a mistake by forgetting some random meeting for 30 seconds with a Russian ambassador. And then all of a sudden he caved. So I understand Trump's concern. Jesse Waters right there about whether or not Sessions should or shouldn't have recused himself, but he did, and that's all that matters. You know, the biggest issue out of all of this is is the parameters that weren't set, which has allowed this thing to blossom and to mushroom into other things. That's where he should have sat down with Rod Rosenstein and said, hey, Rod, hot Rod, let me ask you a question. I'm going to recuse myself. I can trust you with this. Yes. Okay, good. This is what I want you to do. We need to have parameters in what people are going to be investigated for, and that's it. All right? This is the lane we're setting up. If it veers this way, if it veers that way, we're like, eh. Just like the game, hospital when you were a kid, remember? Surgery, whatever that thing was called, operation. Eh. You touch the side, you get outside, reel you back in. It's that simple. It's that simple. But instead, now what you've got is a fight. You've got to fight. You've got Sessions and Trump fighting. Sessions actually answering back to Trump, saying, look, 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 I'm not political. 
This isn't being politicized. I am here. Everything's done above board. Trump's like, you're not loyal. You shouldn't have allowed this to happen. Everything is political. Everything's politicized. It's all weaponized. That's what the DOJ is. Chuck Todd saying, well, essentially, don't you want to then weaponize it in your favor? Of course, everybody wants to. If you take over a company, right? So you, you, you're you hired as a manager or whatever, right? You take over a company, you buy into a company, whatever it is, you come in. You're going to want to surround yourself with people you know, people you can trust. You're not going to get rid of everybody, right? There's a reason you bought the company. There's a reason you wanted to work there. So, yeah, you're not going to – but you want to surround yourself with people that are that are going to, you know, have your best interest. I get that. I do. Absolutely. Trump right now has hired these people. He's got to let them do their job. Well, he stepped away. Well, you should have got this. Hey, look, here's the deal. I appoint you. You going to recuse yourself? Well, it should have been discussed before, but we didn't know this was going to happen. You didn't think something potentially could happen? You don't think out of all the things? Let's think about all the things. I'm hiring you, you, you know. Oh, I forgot about the time I sat down and I met with this pro. Oh, no, now I'm going to be, I've got to recuse myself because I could be in a situation where I, well, then maybe you're not the person for the job. But he got the job. That was on Trump's call. It was like Melania said, you should give him the job, right? Right? Jared. Then go to Spice. Spice, should I give him the job? No. It is what it is. This is where we are. And if he's going to fire him at this point in time, there could be some serious issues if he appoints somebody who then stops all of this and people can stand up even on the right and go, yeah, maybe there's some obstruction of justice going on. Let it play itself out. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. This story, you know, it's weird. As a, when... When I was a kid, and I think all of us have done this, like it's like when I'm a parent, I'm going to parent like this, right? I'm going to take the things that my mom and dad did well, and I'm going to take the things that they didn't do well, and I'm going to try to do the opposite. But somewhere along the line, we have this 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 group of parents that has essentially said. I'm going to take all that my mom and dad did well or didn't do well to raise me, and I'm going to throw it all out the window, and I'm going to stand over my child and every other child that's out there and judge them and make sure that they're all parenting on the same kind of lines that I'm parenting, which is helicoptery. And if you dare step out of that, we will shame you which includes allowing your kids to go outside by themselves. I think it's a crazy waste of resources. That's how Corey Wyden views the DCFS investigation launched after someone spotted her daughter, Dorothy, walking the family dog alone. Shortly after the eight-year-old got home, a Wilmette police officer rang the doorbell. Oh, I was like really scared. So, walking the dog. Pretty big dog, too. Walking the dog now. Somebody's, uh, there's child, there's no, nobody's, there's no grown up with the child and the dog. What is happening? We live in the safest time in human history. Again, the ch- and, 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 and the little area they live in, in Illinois, is super safe. Safer than, than, than the average in America. Chances of your child being snatched up are slim to none. And if they are usually taken, it's by who? Somebody they know. I was talking to, to Jack over the weekend, and for those of you who don't know, my son's eight years old, and he w- we were at the, the hotel, and we were swimming and stuff, and I said, oh, yeah, I said, you know, when I was your age, we had a pool out back. We all swam. Moms and dads weren't out there. Oh, my God. What happened? So we swam, because we all knew how to swim. We all knew how to swim. We just swam around, so just swimming. That's what we did. Went outside and played, and the rules were what? When it's dark and the street light comes on, get your ass home. Moms would call other moms, go, hey, is my kid over there? And that was it. 
And if they weren't over there, they didn't lose their mind. Nowadays, you go outside, somewhere along the line, we've got to the point where you think a child is outside by themselves at some point in time. They're going to get snatched up by somebody. So I need to call the authorities because this is what the authorities should be dealing with. She said, are you the one whose daughter just took a little white dog for a walk? And I said, yeah. And um, I said, why? Did she do something wrong? And she's like, well, how old is she? And I said, she's eight. And she said, oh, okay, because we got a call that it was an unattended five-year-old. Wyden says the officer said that was fine and left. But that wasn't the end of the family's troubles. So, an unattended five-year-old. It's always that do-gooder parent. My mom has one, because my little brothers who are adopted, they're actually my little nephews, uh, who they're adopted. They'll be outside on their bike, and they'll be riding their bike around, and they're on their scooter, and they have a helmet, and somebody will go, you know, your children are outside riding without a helmet. It's like, go inside. Just get over it. My mom's at the point now, it's like, ah, because they're still kids. My mom, parents, like, it's the 70s. I'm like, mom, you can't do that anymore. You can't. You got a parent like every one of these kids is going to be snatched up. You have to parent that way. You, 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 you have to. You have to parent like everybody is out to call CPS because they know what's best for those kids. And she's like, it's insane. I'm like, it is insane. This is not how we should parent children. Again, we want them to grow, and we want them to take steps away from the nest. We talked about it the other day, right? Which is, we parent now as if we don't parent. We It's all about equality. They're, they're no longer our children. They're our peers. And that's wrong. That's wrong. So apparently, whoever called the police didn't think the police were a good enough judge of what was okay and not okay, and then they called DCFS. The police did not. So what happens? Little girl takes a little dog for a walk, right? She's eight in a safe neighborhood around the block. Somebody calls the police. Police come and go, eh, this is stupid. Police say, yeah, no, this is dumb. We're, we're stepping away. So then then they call, yes, are you ready for it? They call Child Protective Services because it wasn't enough because the police didn't take the child away. An investigation was launched and Wyden hired an attorney to clear her name. The matter was resolved in less than two weeks, but Wyden says she was left with many questions and felt mom shamed. Of course, that's because because everybody has a voice now. We've got all of these opportunities to have voices. So we give everybody a voice people who don't understand the situation like i'm always you know what what, and i don't know if you guys i mean i'm sure you think about it too you're outside right you're working in your yard or when, when i was a kid growing up front yard the streets everywhere was where we were everywhere everywhere is where we were when i'm a kid now it's like, and you mean, yeah, people slow down. You know where to slow down. There's kids out here and stuff like that. You know, hey, they all wave to you. You'd be playing hockey or football or baseball, stickball, whatever you're doing in the street and, and in the yard. And we'd all wave to each other. It'd be great and everything was fine. Nowadays, I drive down the street. I don't see kids anywhere. And if there is a kid outside, there's like eight people with them to protect them. As if it's the Dalai Lama. And this is the this is the reincarnation. We got to protect this kid. It is so stupid. I'm a homeschool mom, and I'm always with my kids. You can accuse me of a lot of things, but not supervising them is not one of them. I don't think it should have ever even made it past the hotline that a little girl walking her dog needs to be investigated. No, 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 it shouldn't. And trust me, I'm sure the cop went <sighs> as we all went <sighs> because it's stupid. I just, I just don't, and you wonder why we have these snowflakes and the trigger warnings and all of this stuff. And it's always that do-gooder neighbor that butts in somewhere, right? It's always that do-gooder neighbor that butts in somewhere. And the next thing you know, your ass is being called, and you hear about these cases more and more. 
where they think they know what's best for your child. No, I think it's best my child plays outdoors. I think it's best that my child had some freedom from mom and dad. I think it's best that my child learn certain boundaries that were boundaries we all learned. Like climbing a damn tree. It's nuts. And we've taken that away. And the sad thing is, not only have we taken that away, even if you're found by the state not to have done anything wrong, it doesn't stop people from wanting to put their nose in your business and tell you how bad you are at being a parent because you're not with your child every 24 hours a day. Ah, God. So sad. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Just, I just, I just think to myself, my God, what? And, and so my, my mom said last time I was out there a couple weeks ago. She said, you know, Chad, these kids, we we get people calling us or saying, hey, your kids are outside and doing something all the time. And they live in a cul de sac, right? It's not like they live in some main thoroughfare. And. and and she goes, the things we used to do when we were younger, right? The, the, how they used to allow for just go do your thing is amazing. She go, I go, Mom, you'd be in jail. She goes, oh, absolutely. She goes, but everybody would be in jail. I said, yeah. But they don't want that anymore. They don't want kids to have freedom. They don't. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chet Benson Show is your Twitter. Oh my lord! Hey, Dollar Shave Club, Dollar Dollar Holler, absolutely fantastic. Razors, the best around. Six blade executive razors, right? Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, you name it, they've got it. I love all of my products. I can't tell you how. I mean, it, it is so amazing. The products are. Just incredible. You smell, you feel amazing. It's awesome. It really is awesome. Now is your chance to try it. Five bucks right now. Five dollars. And I tell you guys to get, uh, the, you know, first of all, you start with their, 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 their starter kits, right? So you get a starter set. You can't go wrong. I have the, I started with the amber lavender body cleanser, but you can get whatever you want. I just tell you, throw something else in there and get the hair care products or the toothpaste and the toothbrush. But get their hair care products. It is really incredible. My hair looks amazing. It really does. And and I love their products. Try it today. Five bucks. Become a member. After that, product shipped at regular price. They got a new video. Check it out. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Chad. Dollarshaveclub.com slash Chad. Dollarshaveclub.com slash Chad. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. How much drink is too much drink? Wait till you hear this and your useless fact of the day. It's Chad Benson Show. Take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. There is a new global study out this morning that finds that the harmful effects of alcohol consumption greatly outweigh any potential benefits. Research published in the medical journal The Lancet found there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. According to the study, there's a strong association between alcohol consumption and increased risk of cancer. More than 2% of women and almost 7% of men worldwide die from alcohol-related health problems every year. No drink! I'm a moderation guy, and and if you've listened to the show, you know I've never had a drink in my life. I've never even tasted alcohol. I don't care what other people do, but I've always been a moderation guy. It's like these things, like polls and studies, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. You got to look at the data. You do. You, you've you've got to try to you know, you've because first of all, I'm always curious about like who's writing this, and not all things are equal. You get a thousand people you look at, they're not living the same lifestyle. 
right? You got to go back and look at their, you know, you go back and look at their genetics and, and, and hereditary conditions and, and the lifestyle they lead, the stress they're under, the jobs they have. Not all things are equal. And I always look at it and say, look, it's, 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 everything's about moderation, right? Right. I mean, you try to eat pretty decent, right? And you try to not abuse things. You're you're probably going to do okay. You know, you're probably going to be all right. But if you go and you abuse stuff, doesn't matter what it is, at some point in time, it's going to catch up to your ass. Doesn't matter what it is. You know, for years, it was like, well, a glass or two of wine. You look at how long the Italians live and these certain villages live forever. And why is this? And maybe it's because they drink wine. Or maybe it's because they've got decent genetics and they don't live a lifestyle that other people live. It would be considered mundane by today's standards. There's a lot of different things that you have to look at. So I always take certain things like this. Mm, it's like polls, like when people show up. I like data, but remember, data can be massaged, whether it's climate change or global warming or how they ask a certain question. And you, I could hire somebody today and say, hey, tell me the benefits of donuts. And they'll figure out a way to say, look, you know what? Hey, this guy ate a donut every day for six months, but he also only had 1,800 calories total and he did but the donut was part of it every single day i mean you could find benefits in anything and you could find ways to trash anything isn't it really about moderation that's what i think 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter your useless fact of the day earth earth is the only planet not named after a god oh that's interesting have a good rest of your day and a great weekend as always night night jack This is the Chad Benson Show.